Um, my name is Christine Jones. I am the co-chair of the Canadian Peace Alliance, which is Canada's largest umbrella group of peace and anti-war organizations. We represent about 140 organizations across Canada, ranging from neighborhood groups to organizations like the Canadian Labour Congress. And it is my honor today to be able to present to you two very well-known and esteemed speakers on the issues of civil liberties, human rights, and militarism. The first speaker that we will have today is Roque Tassé, and he's the National Coordinator of the International Civil Liberties Monitoring Group. ICLMG is a national coalition of Canadian civil society organizations that was established in the aftermath of September 2001 terrorist attacks in the United States. ICLMG brings together 38 NGOs, unions, professional associations, faith groups, environmental organizations, human rights and civil liberties advocates, as well as groups representing immigrant and refugee communities in Canada. The coalition's mandate is to monitor the government around anti-terrorism and national security measures in order to protect and to promote our civil liberties and fundamental human rights. Freya al Muslimi is the son of a farmer in a poverty stricken area in Yemen called Wasab. Freya al Muslimi has become one of the most prominent youth activists, human rights defenders, and writers in his country of Yemen. His name quickly spread through national media outlets when he delivered a powerful testimony in a congressional hearing on American drone strikes in Yemen earlier this year. Al Muslimi spoke about the drone attacks that targeted his village and others. He's clear about his political independence, and he has co founded and chaired several youth initiatives in Yemen and has written for the National Foreign Policy Al Monitor, Asafir, and the Executive Magazine. First, I'll give a brief statement from the Canadian Peace Alliance, and then we'll move on to Rock Tasse. Finally, we'll have Ferreira speak, and then we'll have a brief question and answer period concluding. Currently in Canada, military spending has reached its highest level since World War II. The Canadian First Defense Strategy documents military spending to a total of about $480 billion. But some of the costs are already running over budget, including the proposed purchases of the F-35 jets and the construction of new Canadian warships. And this could actually push the military spending to over half a trillion dollars. The Canadian Peace Alliance believes that spending money on weapons will not create security. While it's true that at this time there is no active drone use by Canada or in Canada, Canada's Air Force seems committed to getting a squadron of drones to keep watch over vast tracts of the country's coastline and Arctic regions, and also to carry weapons in war zones. In fact, with the government's <clears throat> intent to expand the reach of Canadian forces overseas, with agreements to establish bases in Jamaica, Kuwait, and Germany, and with plans for Singapore, South Korea, Senegal, Kenya, and Tanzania, it seems clear what their intention is. The expansion and the potential use of drones would embroil Canada in the affairs of sovereign states and would redefine Canada as an aggressive military power. Canadian Peace Alliance believes that real security is only possible when the people of the world can meet their basic needs. As heard through the testimonies of those who live in regions assaulted by drones, the message is clear. If the objective is to stop terrorism, then the use of drones is having the opposite effect. And this ought to be a cautionary tale for the Canadian government. We believe that money earmarked for military spending must be reallocated to those things that bring about real peace and prosperity and true human security, to social and environmental programs, to protect jobs and pensions, to preserve public health care and education, and to create a green economy. I pass the mic over to Rock Tesse. Bonjour. Le mandat de la Coalition pour la surveillance internationale des libertés civiles est de défendre le respect des droits humains, des conventions et des règles de droit international dans la lutte contre le, contre le terrorisme. En 2003, 
Le rapporteur spécial des Nations unies sur les exécutions extrajudiciaires, sommaires et arbitraires affirmait, et je cite, « Le recours aux exécutions extrajudiciaires afin de lutter contre le terrorisme est un précédent inquiétant et un sujet de grave préoccupation. Il existe des rapports à l'effet que des gouvernements et leurs agents abusent de leur autorité en utilisant une force excessive contre des civils non armés sous le couvert de la lutte contre le terrorisme. Une décennie plus tard, le phénomène est encore plus inquiétant que prévu. Nous sommes profondément troublés par l'expansion de l'utilisation des frappes de drones par les États-Unis, principal allié militaire du Canada, pour exécuter de présumés terroristes en dehors de zones de guerre, comme par exemple au Yémen ou au Pakistan, entre autres. Le programme d'assassinat sélectif approuvé par George W. Bush et qui a pris de l'ampleur sous le président Obama soulève de sérieuses questions d'ordre éthique, moral et légal. Le programme permet purement et simplement, par autorisation présidentielle, sans aucun processus judiciaire, l'exécution sommaire d'individus ciblés sur la base d'une quelconque association au terrorisme. Des individus sont ainsi éliminés sans accusation, sans procès, sans preuve judiciaire, sur la base de critères secrets, discrétionnaires et arbitraires. Et ceci en tuant un nombre disproportionné de civils et en causant la terreur dans les communautés. Cela nous apparaît comme une grave atteinte à la primauté du droit et au droit à la vie, enchâssé dans les conventions et le droit international auxquels souscrivent les États qui se réclament démocratiques et civilisés. Pas moins de quatre rapports rendus publics au cours du mois d'octobre ont documenté et confirmé ces exécutions et soulevé des préoccupations semblables. Heureusement, le Canada n'est pas impliqué dans ce genre d'opération et ne dispose pas pour l'instant de drones meurtriers, et nous applaudissons cet état de fait. Toutefois, nous savons que des discussions sont déjà en cours au Canada et entre les alliés européens de l'OTAN sur l'utilisation de drones à des fins militaires. C'est dans le contexte de telles discussions que nous sommes ici aujourd'hui pour sonner l'alarme et demander à notre gouvernement de procéder avec une grande prudence et en consultant le plus largement possible dans son processus de réflexion menant à une éventuelle décision sur le déploiement de drones par les forces armées canadiennes. Avant tout, nous implorons le gouvernement de prendre une voie différente que celle empruntée par ses alliés américains et de s'assurer que toute politique canadienne relative aux drones respecte la primauté du droit et nos engagements en vertu du droit international. Merci. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor to be in Canada. Um, a great honor to be in um, uh, Ottawa after a great days in Halifax. As many of you know, my name is Faryal Muslimi. I've been uh, 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 I have conducted long-term uh, researches and short-term researches about drone strikes and their impact in Yemen. And um, I'm hoping to take some role in uh, uh, speaking and meetings the next few days in Canada to raise awareness about um, the issue of drone strikes uh, conducted by the United States of America and other countries in my home country of Yemen. Um, over the last uh, few years, uh, hundreds of drone strikes have targeted Yemen. Um, unfortunately, in massive majority, um, they killed civilians, um, and um, they have. Um, uh, we have seen in the ground that this has been an issue where um, it empowered Al Qaeda rather than actually destroying it, and uh, it has uh, harmed the reputation of the Yemeni army. It has, um, we believe, as we have seen it clearly, uh, um, have made the United States of America less safe and also the country of Yemen. With that in mind. Um, we hope it doesn't seem, unfortunately, there will be much change so far until now uh, with the U.S. policy. And therefore, we feel it's uh, one of the duties of uh, United States military uh, partners to push it toward more transparency and to push it toward shift in, this, uh, in, in, in the use of drone strikes, especially in countries like Yemen. Um, I am, again, very happy to be here and I'm thankful for all those who made this trip happy, uh, happen, um, especially the Ottawa Peace Assembly, International Civil Liberties Monitoring Group, and Human Rights Research and Education Center at the University of Ottawa, and the Institute of uh, Interdisciplinary Studies at uh, uh, Carleton University and NOAA. Um, thank you very much. We can take questions now. Anybody have any sure. Anyone have any questions?
Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you get a set up you needed to say? Sorry? Did you get a set up you needed to say? Uh, yes, exactly.